Hey everyone, it's me, we're back for 2020 and have I got a doozy for you. So my original plan was always to make an Australian themed cake for my first video of 2020. So I decided that the happiest animal on the planet, the quokka, was super cakeable. When I mentioned this idea to my son, he decided to turn it up a notch. Mummy says, if you're going to do something Australian, why don't you make it fully fledged Aussie? Well, what's more iconic than Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Do a quok in a frock on a rock. The boy is pure genius. So that's what I did. I created Priscilla, Quok of the Desert. Happy 2020 and I hope you enjoyed this week's video. So Santa Claus might have gifted me with a scroll saw this year, something I've wanted for a long time for this exact reason. I got a little bit extra and decided to create my cake board in the shape of our proud land. Now of course you can use any shape cake board for this, it's just I wanted to play with my new toys so I made a cake board in the shape of Australia. The first thing I did, which is something I do to all of my threaded rod structured boards, was added some feet to the base of the board. This raises the board and gives us room to be able to thread the rod through the base without it touching the table. I then measured the template that I'm using and I cut the threaded rod to the right length accordingly, put that into a hole that I drilled into the center of my board and then using some washers, locking washers and some nuts, I popped it all together. If you'd like to see more in depth how I put my threaded rod structured boards together, just click the I and it will take you to a video showing you how I do that. The next thing I have to do is to make my board food safe because I'm going to have cake directly touching the board. So to do this, I'm just using some aluminium tape that I'm going to tape to the base of the board. And then I'm going to take some up that threaded rod as far as the first cake is going. Now that our board is prepared and food safe, it's time to start building the rock. To build the rock, I'm using a vanilla cake that I have torted, which is a fancy word for splitting in half. And I'm filling it with a white chocolate and lemon ganache. Once it's all filled, I'm then going to carve out the shape that I like. Of course, remember this is a rock, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm then gonna go ahead and do a ganache coat on that rock and pop it aside to chill. Now that the rock cake is all covered in ganache and had some time to set up, it's time to cover it with fondant. So to color the fondant for my rock, what I'm doing is taking some white fondant to which I'm adding some copper and some dark brown gel food coloring. I'm going to mix that through, but I'm not gonna mix it all the way through because I want the variations and the striations through that fondant so it looks a little bit more outback au naturel. Okay, once you're happy with how the color looks in the fondant, you need to roll that fondant out. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to take my chef's torch and I'm going to lightly torch the top of the entire surface of fondant. What I'm doing here is actually activating the sugar within the fondant and semi-crystallizing it on the top. It's going to dry the fondant out just on the top section and then once it's set, I'm going to roll it out and it'll start cracking and be a little bit more organic looking. I'm going to take that fondant, place it over that centre pole and then over the rock cake. I'm going to start smoothing that around the cake and trying not to alter too much of the crackage that I've already produced on the fondant. If you need to tear parts off and add parts on, great. The messier, the better. We want this to look organic. Next part of the cake is to start working on our quokka structure. Of course, now I'm going to need another cake board to hold the quokka cake. I've cut a four inch round MDF board and I've drilled two holes slightly further to the front than to the back. Now what I'm going to do is to take that board, flip it upside down and use a little bit of modeling chocolate just to round out the base of it because that's going to be our quokka's belly. Make sure that before you put this over the threaded rod that you make some space for the nut and washer to go in. It is a little bit fiddly, a little bit tricky, but you will get there in the end, just persevere. Once you've secured that board to the threaded rod, go ahead and food safe everything, and then tidy up that modeling chocolate underneath that's going to make the belly. 
I just want to give you a little side note. Something I didn't explain before I put the board together was that through that second hole, what I did was placed some armature wire, twirled the top, and then hot glued that twirly section to the top of the board to secure it. We'll be using that wire for the quokka's other leg. Okay, now it's time to build the quokka on top of that board. First thing I'm going to do is place some plastic wrap over the rock section so that it stays nice and clean while we work on carving the quokka. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some chocolate ganache on that board. I'm then going to put my first layer of chocolate mud cake onto the board. Using my template as a guide to how high I need this cake to be, I'm going to continue stacking chocolate mud cake with layers of ganache in between. I'm using 5 inch and 6 inch chocolate cakes for this project. Once all the cake is stacked and as tall as I want it, I'm going to use my template and start carving out the shape of my quokka. Make sure that you use templates to get the right shape of this little guy. The back's quite oval and arched. I'll have the template for this little guy available on my website also. Once his body's all carved, I'm then gonna go ahead and give it a rough ganache coat, including that chocolate on the bottom underneath the board. And then I'm going to chill it, and after it's chilled, bring it back and give it a final good ganache coat. With the shape of the quokka, I ended up doing like an egg shape, and then just carving out small sections right here where the haunches of the legs will be, which gave us a center section here, and the back ended up staying quite arched. Of course this little guy's head is going to need some support to make sure that it doesn't collapse onto the rest of the cake. So to do this I'm just using some wooden dowels that I'm placing into the entire cake and then I'm going to put a very small cake board on top of that just using a little bit of ganache to attach it. Okay so now we've got this little guy all carved and ganached and chilled and set it's time to move on to the head. To create the head, firstly I need a base structure to build the head around, so for this purpose I'm just going to use some aluminium foil. I create a ball of aluminium foil and pop that onto the threaded rod that is poking out the top of the body. I then add my modelling chocolate to that base structure, which is the aluminium foil, and start creating the face. You will notice that the quokka's head is actually really, really small and quite pointed. It does represent like a hamster's face or a mouse face and I've actually done a tutorial on how to create a mouse out of modeling paste. If you want to check out the video where I created my mouse, just click on the eye here and it will take you to that video and will give you some sort of idea of the structure I'm using for this cake. Besides that, it's probably better just to watch what I do. Okay, now we've got the face sculpted, it's time to start adding the facial details. The first thing I'm doing is I'm finding where I want my eye placement to be, once again looking at templates at pictures of quokkas, and I've carved out a little bit of the modelling chocolate that was in the face after I've marked where I want them to be. A quokka's eyes are sort of an almond shape, sort of a more rounded almond, and they sort of point inwards towards where the nostrils will be, if you get my drift. I'm sure the footage will explain it a lot better than I can. Once I've carved out where I want the eyes to go, I'm just going to take some black modeling chocolate and roll two teardrop shapes to go into the eyes. Checking always that they're not too big, you want them to slightly protrude, but just ever so slightly. I just pop those eyes into the eye sockets. The next thing I wanna do is add some eyelids, both bottom and top. So for the bottom lids, it's just very, very thin pieces of the same coloured modelling chocolate that I've created the face in. And I just run that underneath each eye and create a little under eye lid. Once I'm happy with that, I go ahead and I do exactly the same thing with a slightly thicker piece of modelling chocolate for the top lid. Now to do his little mouth, I'm also using modelling chocolate. I've got some pink modelling chocolate and I roll that into a little teardrop shape and pop it into the mouth cavity. I am pressing that down with my Dresden tool, making it all nice and smooth. 
Now a Quokka's bottom lip is a little darker than the rest of the mouth so I'm going to achieve this look by just rolling out some black modelling chocolate once again into a very very thin rope and then just wrap that around the bottom lip. And then once I've done that I'm going to add two of the tiniest tiniest teeth by just taking some white modelling chocolate and placing it sort of behind that black lip that we've just made. You can barely see them but it's all in the details. Now for his little nose. So once again, black modeling chocolate that I've rolled into a ball and then into like a heart shaped, well a heart shaped ball. Their noses are quite large, so remember that on the scale size of things. And then just pop that onto where his nose is going. And then I add the nostrils, a little line up the center of the nose, and then it's done. So the next step is covering his body in modeling chocolate. I'm using the same color modeling chocolate, of course, that I use for his face. To cover this guy, I'm going to do it in two sections, front and back. I'm rolling out the modeling chocolate reasonably thinly, and then I'm just going to panel the front first, smooth it all down, and tidy that all up, and then just cut off any excess that you don't need. I'll then go ahead and do exactly the same on the back and then I'm just going to take my X-Acto blade and cut down either side of the quokka and then because we're using modelling chocolate I can easily blend those seams together. Okay now I've got this guy covered and reasonably smoothed out. Don't worry about being too perfect about it, we are texturizing him so it'll cover up any of those little imperfections. Now it's time to add some legs and some feet with some claws and some arms and some little hands and some claws on the hands also. To create the legs I'm just going to extend down from those haunches with a little bit of modeling chocolate and just bring the leg down a little further. Now, quokkas have quite large feet. To create the feet, I'm going to roll out a piece of the same colored modeling chocolate into a sort of like a teardrop shape. I'm going to flatten that out a bit and make two slits at the top where we can make the toes. I'm then going to just elongate those toes with my fingers and then attach those to the legs. To make the claws, I'm just taking three pieces of black modeling chocolate per foot and rolling three little teardrop shapes that I'm attaching to each of the top of those toes. Now, as opposed to the quokka's feet, the quokka's arms are very, very little. To create the arms, I'm just going to take some more modeling chocolate and roll it into an elongated cone shape. Make sure that it's not too long because like I said, quokkas have tiny little arms. Think T-Rex. They're that tiny. I'm going to attach those just under the neck of the quokka. To create the little hands, I'm taking the same colored modeling chocolate and rolling a very small little oval shape. And then once again, cutting slits in the top of this to make five little digits. I'm going to elongate those little digits and attach those to the hands. I'm going to use the same technique that I use for the claws on the feet to make the claws on the hands. Now it's time to make his ears. Quokkas do have quite small ears and they're pretty rounded, they're not overly pointed. So I'm just taking two pieces of modeling chocolate rolled into a circle. I'm going to flatten that out and then manipulate it on the top of the head until I'm happy with the shape. And last but not least, I have to make this little guy's tail. So I'm just taking the same modeling chocolate I'm rolling that into a long cone shape and then attaching it to bottom. Okay, so the next thing I have to do with this little guy is to start texturing him. Quokkas are really, really furry, so I'm going to be using a couple of techniques for this. I'm going to be using a combination of my Dresden tool, a clay sculpting tool which has sort of got a bladed end. Um, I'll probably use some very small manicure scissors and my brulee torch just to get rid of all the excess chocolate. 
Make sure you take your time with this. Well, you really have no choice. This takes forever. And follow the hair pattern that you see in the reference photos that you have. Now it's time to bring the rock and the quokka to life with some colour. I'm going to use a combination of airbrush colour and edible paint as well as some petal dusts. Remember to always check your reference photos but quokkas are coloured differently so you know anything goes. And that's it, that's how you colour the quokka. I didn't end up using any dusts or edible paints. Uh, the airbrush was quite enough. And yes, you can airbrush on modelling chocolate, just very light layers at a time to avoid beading. The next thing I have to do is to make this Australiana themed flower crown. So for this project, I'm using Nicholas Lodge's gum paste, tried and true by decorators across the world. I'll put the link in the description below where you can find his recipe. To make the waddle, I've just colored some flower paste in yellow, and then I just roll it into tiny balls, take some florist wire with a hook at one end, dip that hook into some Tylos glue, and then just pop it inside the ball. I then cover that ball in some more Tylos glue, and then I dip it in a mixture of polenta mixed with some yellow powdered food color. Voila! You've got wattle. To make the leaves, I've colored some flower paste a eucalyptus green by mixing some moss green and a tiny, tiny bit of black. I roll that out on my cell cake board, which makes a little groove in the back, which makes it easier for us to add florist wire. Now, because I didn't have a leaf cutter that was small enough to create these leaves, I've just cut out with my X-Acto knife the shape that I wanted. I then just take some florist wire, dipped in a bit of Tylos glue and thread it into that little groove that was made by the cell cake board. Then just pop them aside to dry. Okay, so to put the flower crown together, I've just taken a couple of pieces of florist wire and twisted them together. And now we're just going to start adding the wattle and the leaves wherever we like. I do that by just taking one of the pieces and just twisting it on. Now it's time to add the frock to the quok. To make the frock, which is actually just a skirt, I've used a great recipe for edible fabric that I found here on YouTube and I will put a link in the description where you can find that recipe. I've just cut the edible fabric into strips and then with some piping gel, I'm going to pleat that just around the quokka's belly. Then we need to attach the flower crown, which is super, super simple. Just pop the flower crown around the head and attach the two ends of wires. Okay, she's all dressed up now. It's time to finish this off by doing the board. I wanted to give the board a little bit of a red sand in the desert sort of look, so I just took some ginger nut biscuits, crushed them up finely, and attached them to the board using piping gel. I made some really basic grass by colouring some wafer paper in like a tan sort of colour for dry grass, cutting it into thin strips and attaching that also with some piping gel. I thought considering she's Priscilla, I might just paint her little toenails pink also. And that, my friends, is it. That's how you make a quok in a frock on a rock. Remember with the skills I've taught you today, it doesn't limit you to just this design. You could make other animals using the same concept. I'm thinking Australian natives, so like a kangaroo or a koala or a Tassie devil, sky's the limit. Well, that's a wrap on the first tutorial for 2020. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell down the bottom so that you're informed every time I upload new content. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me again this week. Don't forget, I'm gonna put some links in the description below of organizations that you can donate to to help the people that have been affected by these awful fires. 
as well as our wildlife. Well, I've shown you how it's done. It's your turn now. You know what to do. Go and get your cake on. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.